Nostalgia. These past two years have left us all feeling nostalgic for better times. Binging that favorite show. Rewatching that same movie you know you know every line of by heart. That old favorite game, book, etc. We're all living in the past to cope with our present in hope of a less anxious future. In fact, even the word stems from trying to escape pain. Nostalgia comes from the Greek root words nostos, or homecoming, and algos, or longing. In 1688, a Swiss medical student named Johannes Hofer discovered this feeling in Swiss soldiers fighting abroad who missed their country and longed for the past before war. The initial studies decided that it was almost a Swiss exclusive illness. Or were they wrong? Hofer referred to this new condition as the melancholy of war. What war are you fighting within yourself right now that makes you yearn for the past? What does nostalgia mean to you? This documentary explores the effects of nostalgia through the lens of psychology and what triggers it. Let's dive in. Psychology states that feelings of nostalgia come about from feeling low and being used in attempt to boost moods. In fact, it was even considered a mental disorder. This is not hard to imagine. An inability to be present can be a hindrance to anyone, but we usually indulge in the past when we're feeling low anyways. It's not worth trying to stay present when the present sucks. Doctor, help me. In the face of instability, our mind will reach for our positive memories of the past, which tend to be more crystallized than negative or neutral ones. Christine Baccio, author of the article, The Psychological Benefits and Trappings of Nostalgia. In short, we exalt these memories like no other because they're so close yet so far away, and they come about during a time when any and everything is better than reality. So, in turn, we take our past reality and make it holier than it probably actually was. My memories at their most nostalgic are very nearly encapsulated by my consumption of pop culture. Major moments and shifts that come to mind I convince myself took up more of my life than they probably actually did. Our brains have the ability to rewrite and reform our own history in a way. Any trauma, any sadness, any and all despair can be undone by the power of romanticized reminiscence. It's like a drug, a euphoric ability to seize and capture the best qualities of life in a stunning image that may even be better than what it was. There is nothing wrong with journeying to the past for happiness, but it also comes with its downsides. It's not always a late night tsunami block on Adult Swim. There are so many more effects on yourself when you squeeze those memories with such desperation and longing for your own hyperbolic sense of perfection. Your era and your life was so much different. You can control it or you can blast it beyond belief, all for comfort. It's tough to believe that our dissatisfaction now will be met with so much praise in the future. Of those effects is a depressive state. Of course, this makes sense because dwelling on any time that will never come back would make a person sad. This causes a bit of stagnation in life where the convoluted past becomes more satisfying than the present and the present is then left unattended. In other words, living in the past can mess your life up which is why our connection to entertainment being able to be relived brings us so much joy because it's a very tangible piece of the past that can be consumed at any time. The opposite can happen as well as you mature. You get sick of things that take away your adult agency and you jettison the past away and everything with it. This just comes with growing up and moving on. However, Bacho also stated in the same previously quoted article that when adult tasks become hard to perform and moving forward in life makes someone anxious, nostalgia can cause a quelling phase to the chaos of responsibility and give you time to breathe and push through. Again, it's like an addictive state of being. With the right dosage, it can be healing, just like any medicine in life. Hollywood knows we like the past, which is why it constantly refreshes, celebrates, and 
in true business-obsessed fashion, reboots our favorite entertainment. How many reunions, remakes, or streaming renouncements of older franchises have been announced within the last couple of years? This also could be due to the fact that Hollywood in general lacks originality across all forms of entertainment, but I feel most people have a pleasantly nostalgic memory of Tinseltown when they think of it. I personally think back to black and white old Hollywood movies, even before I think of the media that I was actually consuming when it was new in my life. There is a culture and legacy to retaining the past in Hollywood. Think Disney and its never-ending vault, or the rides that have been the same for several generations. We have all grown accustomed to the preservation of things with much or little intrinsic value so long as they make us feel good in the moment. Almost as if they are all a part of the same algorithmic system that leaves us longing for a former part of ourselves. Weird. You walk into this room at your own risk, because it leads to the future. Not a future that will be, but one that might be. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. So when considering the past, be aware of your current state of life and try not to get trapped. Don't throw away nostalgia, but use it as needed to cope until you come to grips with your current reality. There is nothing more insatiable than getting lost in memory, even when we are recovering memories that are far more polished than they actually were. That is the state of the human condition. Imagination trumps all realization of what the past really was in its totality. Which clips in this documentary brought back the most feelings of longing for any semblance of a past that brought you right back to being a kid again? Did any self-reflection lead you to destroy those memories blocked by entertainment? Or did it soberingly lead you to realize that the past was just as painful as the present? This channel is based on the historicity of nostalgia in a strange way, but I have never really looked into the actual factors surrounding nostalgia as they present themselves through the lens of psychology. I've tapped into the psychology of fame, I've tapped into celebrity worship syndrome, and what I realize now is that beyond the velvet rope of celebrity, an obsession with fame is not what binds most people who engage in consumption and discussion of pop culture. No, not that at all. It's escapism. These images we've been inundated with our whole lives have been little portals through which to escape, and we've fallen for it. You take away the history from pop culture, and what you're left with is a fantastical lie that is meant to be a distraction. Spoiler alert, it worked.